Hey everybody, we're back with another quick one here as we are uh, running out of daylight. But I was just in the middle of up potting a bunch of these flying dragon citrus seedlings into these 50 cell trays just to keep things kind of organized for next year and grow these out to a little larger size for sale. And I am noticing a lot of variation because for those of you who don't know, uh, flying dragon is not only a mutation of standard trifolia orange, but it produces seeds that are zygotic, meaning all of these seedlings, uh, or at least a large percentage of them, will vary in terms of their stem contortions, in terms of you know their production, their growth habit, everything. You know, so we get a wide range of plants that are uh, have different amounts of curvature or none at all. Some just have straight thorns. Some grow a lot slower. Some have extra chromosomes, which means it's got thicker leaves, uh, darker green leaves than, than normal, and uh, it just generally grows more robust than a lot of these other seedlings. So this, this here might be a selection that will save as a potentially cold, hardier version of Flying Dragon. I mean, these are already ridiculously cold hardy, but this could potentially be even hardier. However, that's not why I'm making this video. You know, I'm noticing different variations here and there. Most of them are pretty standard of what you would see. Now, if you see closer, these are all the leaves of a normal flying dragon. And then over here, these are the leaves of a flying dragon that I found that has a very unique quality to it, very similar to another popular trifolia orange variety known as Ponserus Plus. Now this seedling here, I noticed that its leaves and its growth habit were a little different than some of these other seedlings nearby. So I tasted one of these leaves. I plucked off a new one and an old one. And what do you know? I found a flying dragon variation that does not have bitterness or pine taste in its leaves, which is very, very exciting. It does mean, potentially, that that could carry on into the fruit and we could have an improved trifoliate orange here, or an improved flying dragon specifically. So that's pretty unique because there's already, uh, you know, standard Ponserus Plus, which, you know, doesn't have any of the stem contortions, but this one does seem to have a little, you know, it's got little bends and uh, little bends in the thorns as well. But I just found it fascinating that the leaves were narrower than a lot of the other plants, and that they didn't have that taste. So that's pretty cool to see because, I mean, this is like one of the things that you would want to run into when you're selecting these seedlings here. And I mean, if you really wanted to spend a lot of time tasting every single leaf, uh, you could. But what I was looking out for, and honestly what I've been looking out for for the last couple of years, is just plants that stand out in terms of their foliage and growth habit, things like that, because then, to me, that signals a degree of variation that might be uh, significant for selecting. So in this case, and just in this little batch, so we have 100 plants and we, we have like a reject pile here. <laughs> um, but these are all the plants that were, you know, growing the healthiest and, and just look the best for selecting for next year. But we do have a couple here that show a lot of potential in very different ways. I don't think the fruit on this would be all that great. But as a hardy ornamental that you could grow possibly into a zone 5 with that extra hardiness on top of what it already has, um, that's pretty cool. And, you know, that alone may be worthwhile to someone. However, for the rest of us in these slightly warmer zones, if this can survive zone 6 and upwards and have an improved taste, I mean, if, if you've ever had a good trifoliate orange uh, variation. You know, th there are different variations, and I've had some that don't taste quite as good. They have that funk that people refer to, but if you've tasted a good one, they're not bad. <laughs> they're really not. They do have that kind of piney aftertaste, you know, that resin to them, but in terms of flavor, they're just like orangey, lemony, little grapefruit in there. Uh, they're like a unique blend of citrus plus pine tree <laughs> is the best I could describe it as. They're very palatable and they actually make a tasty drink that I've had people try, you know, w without bribing or anything. 
<laughs> any any bias to it, you know, blind taste testing, and they found it made a very agreeable lemonade. So it the fruits do have potential from specific variations, and I think this one in particular has the most because if you can get rid of that um that bitterness or that pininess to it, all you're left with is that complex blend of citrus flavors, which is really, really cool. So to make a long point shorter, we found potentially the next Ponceris Plus. I will be grafting this out and prop, uh, propagating it next year. Um, hopefully I'll have at least one or two copies out in the field growing as tall as they can so we can get some fruit sooner. Um, but I will be trying to get this big enough to eventually share the budwood and share the plants. So that would be a really exciting one to distribute to you guys. So I hope you share in this excitement too. And, um, you know, if you have the space and, and the resources to do so, get yourself some bulk quantities of trifoliate orange seeds. Find a plant near you. Sometimes you could find them. I've, I've found them on iNaturalist. It's a website and an app. And I found where they plant them just in the city for ornamental value or maybe arboretums where you can pick up fallen fruit. But that's the thing. I found wild and cultivated trifoliate orange, scooped up all those fruit from the ground, and then germinated those seeds. And flying dragon or not, a lot of them still have quite a good number of zygotic seedlings, which gives us all a good chance of finding improved varieties. And that goes for more than just trifoliate orange. Any citrus, uh, any hardy citrus specifically, you know, citromello, citrandarins, things of that nature, if you have the resources, grow out a bunch of these. Select ones that look different, that, you know, the foliage tastes different, uh, they grow different, whatever it is, different is good variation is good. Any amount of variation puts us closer and closer to moving that citrus belt further north and getting higher quality uh, edible hardy citrus. So that's it for today guys. I will see you next time.